put them in the vault of the heaven to shine on the earth, cover the day and the night, and divide the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. The evening came, morning day, fourth day. God said that the waters team of living creatures. Here's that teeming creation, multitudinous creation, not a single creation. Plural creation. With the birds, plural, fly over the earth within the heavens. And it was, and God created great sea beings of every kind of living creature which, with which the waters teem. Huge, teeming creation. And winged creatures, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters, let the birds multiply. Evening came, morning came, fifth day. We're getting the feel of this, right? It's just a repetitious creation, same thing. Ceremonial, abstract, repetitious. God said, Let the earth produce every kind of living creature, cattle, reptiles, every kind of wild beast. And so it was, and God made every kind of wild beast, every kind of cattle. Everything is just teeming everywhere. There's no east of Eden and some little nook and cranny of the, where God's got man alone and everything else is desert. The whole place is just swarming with everything. And every kind of land reptile, God saw that it was good. Yeah, it's a good, good, good universe, and we do think that. Now, why shouldn't a literary person put it in there? A scientific person isn't going to put it in, but we can. That's where aesthetics comes. God said, let us make man now in our own image. Now there is the plural us. Someone was asking about Elohim as a plural. That's one of the few places that God says, refers to himself in the plural form. He doesn't say, let me make man and put him in my own image. Let us, speaking about the plural, and I suppose the implication is the, the heavenly uh, you know, host or whatever, the host of heaven or whatever used to be the view of God and all his other divine beings all together. And like ourselves, and let them be masters, plural, plural, no Adam and Eve here. This is plural male, plural man creation of the sea, the birds, the cattle. And we don't necessarily agree that they should be so masterful and ruin everything, but uh, we had, you know, this is not a modern uh, presentation. Now here, my Bible has this marked off as a little sort of poem. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And that's the way Canaanite Phoenician poetry used to be. It was repetitious, and it used to go back to front, and then back again, and then, uh, then a third line. It was often like that. And we have examples of Canaanite poetry like this. So that's why my editor is taking this little chunk aside. Now, your Bible won't to take it out. We'll just put it like everything else. And I think that Bible will stop doing it. I don't know if it's got it out or it has it in, that little ditty. It has it in. It has it in, OK. So that's a little bit of poetry, a bit of Canaanite poetry that the authors have identified. I think they're probably right in putting it out like that as a little poetic uh, ditty. That may have been the original. Someone might have uh, re been reciting that as a kind of nursery rhyme and back in 1500 BC, and then some other guy came along and wrote a whole ceremonial presentation. You know, there's people back then. They had brains. They did do things. They weren't just sitting around like uh, morons. You know, they had brains, and they had hands and feet, and they thought about things, and they, you know, liked to, people liked to do things at night in the house. Television wasn't on. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, fill the earth, conquer, be masters of the fish, the sea, the birds, and all living animals. And God said, See, I give you all the seed bearing plants upon the whole earth and all the trees. This is plural man and plural everything else. The seed bearing food, this shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven, all living reptiles on the earth, I give the foliage of plants for food. And they're going to eat all the plants, and you can eat all of them. And so it was, and God saw all he had made, and indeed it was now not just good, but very good. In the Hebrew, not just tov, which is good, but tov ma, very good. Evening came, morning came, six day, we already read this. Thus heaven and earth were completed, and all that ran. On the seventh day, God completed the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day after all the work he had been doing. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on that day he rested from all the work he was creating. Such were the origins of heavens and earth when they were created. Remember that kind of line. 
because that's going to identify this type of writing, those kinds of pronouncements, such were the things, such were the generations of Noah, such were the generations of Abraham, and so on and so forth. That kind of punctuated refrain is going to mark this style that scholars will call priestly. That doesn't mean it is. It's just what scholars have labeled it to help themselves understand this, and who wrote the Bible will explain all that to you. Now we start the second account in 2.5. And it is a second account, but not so much a second account as this gentleman was saying here, or that gentleman back there, uh, because its interest is not in the creation, really. It's in the relation of Adam and Eve. And the creation is just a by background issue. I would say one thing more about the first account before we move on to the second account. And that is, aside from the goodness, what else? Does the writer want to build into the structure of the universe that's important to him, the writer? And he wants to, you to think it's important to God as well, which it may be, I don't know. The order. Not just the order, there's one other thing that just appeared in here that I didn't know, but you may have noted. The Sabbath. The Sabbath. He built the rest day into the creation of the universe. He thought that the day of rest for mankind was so important that he built it into the actual structure of the creation of the universe. That's a masterful thing. Because, you know, whether you like Jews, you don't like Jews, or Hebrews, and, you know, there's all kinds of people who have all kinds of prejudices and think all kinds of weird stuff, and have really deep-seated hatreds in their beings for what they think people are or are not. But whatever the world and all the modern propaganda from the Palestinians and about Israel and how evil it is and the terrible things it supposedly does and all the, and all the problems in the world and how Israel's falls and blah, 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 uh, you know, without end, going back to the Nazi spirit of 50 years ago. For some reason, this germ keeps on reappearing, this hatred and so on. Whatever you want to say or think or feel you think, mankind, womankind, humankind has a great debt to the Hebrews and the Jews. Because before the Jews put in the Sabbath into their structure of the universe, people just worked. There wasn't a day set aside on every seventh cycle for rest. A day that was seriously set aside for rest. That is the contribution you have to admit. 